that it? Oh, no, let me call it in. Dispatch is car 24. We have visual on unit 55. Looks abandoned over. Copy that over. Mother oh! Christ! Shit, they're behind us! We got it. Just go. Now, now! Dispatch, this is car 24. We are over. Car 24. What's going on? Dispatch, this is car uh, 24. We are. Oh, we gotta get back, oh, back, 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 back up, back up, back up. Soldiers of the last man battalion, this is your commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss. There were those among us who were angry when the decision was made to leave us behind. Leave us to die, as some people said. But I looked around at this city, and I saw opportunity. I saw what it had been. And I saw what it could be once again if someone had the guts to fight for it. If there were men willing to go out in the streets and take them back from the degenerates and lowlifes who ruled them now, to do what the cowardly government and its fearful, weak soldiers were too afraid to do, and to cut down all the liars and murderers and thieves who stand in the way of peace, we will not look back. We will not compromise. We will do whatever it takes to ensure a better tomorrow for all those who stand with us. And those who stand against us, may God have mercy on their souls. Bliss out. Tell me we got that. Because God damn it, I'm not doing it a second time. One cut. One cut's gonna make you bleed. But one cut don't kill you. One cut just makes a scar. We're gonna fucking fight him. A deeper cut. Fight him. We're gonna get him. We're gonna... Makes you cry. But you can turn that cry into a roar, or you can turn it into a whimper. That's your choice. I can't so you can choose to be a victim, no matter where you at. Top of the penthouse, in a prison cell, or even free. Roam in your own streets again. Complain about the cold, the rats. Complain about who's in charge. Some people want to stay the victor. They want to cry. I'll give you what you want. You want to be the victor? <laughs> well, I'll make you one. I'll make you one. Me? I'm going to take what's mine. They say this disease is a tragedy. They say it's the end of the world. Oh, yeah. This disease is our teacher. Oh, hell teacher yes. the universe. That they done teaching us to rise up. They taken from us long enough. Now we take from them. They house us, their cars, their families, their lives. This is our time. And now is our time. It's our time. Samples of the original green poison pathogen, the ones we recovered off the currency used as a primary transmission vector, let us take a closer look at the virus's basic genome. What I found was clear evidence the bug had been manufactured. There's genetic material there from a half dozen other pathogens bolted onto smallpox to make a more efficient killing machine.
One of the things that makes a virus lethal is adaptation. Rapid mutation makes it harder for antibodies to identify and drugs to kill. What we're seeing in the samples you pulled from the population at the train yard is the degree of genetic drift green poison is already experiencing, and it's significant, which means it'll be that much harder to find a vaccine. What you're looking at is the smallpox virus. It normally takes one to two weeks for it to incubate in a host, and it's not contagious while it's doing so. Looking at Amherst's notes, it's clear he wanted to change that, to make green poison infectious while it developed, and to speed up that incubation process to make it spread faster. In English, it's more contagious and it reproduces faster. And that's bad. We've got confirmation that green poison wasn't bred. It was coded. Specifically, he picked up on his buddy Chernenko's research about modifying virus genomes in a virtual space, kicked it up a few notches, and fed the result into an industrial protein replicator. What came out the other end was a working virus, one he could keep tweaking to achieve maximum effect. By which I mean, dead people. What you're looking at is the smallpox virus, one of the deadliest pathogens on the planet. For centuries, it did a wonderful job of helping keep the human population in check. But times change, and sometimes Mother Nature needs a hand in improving her creations. Like, say, speeding them up a little bit, making them contagious when they should be quietly incubating in a host, or making them more lethal. I didn't come up with the approach on my own. My friend Vitaly is one of the pioneers in the field, and the idea has been around for years. Genome as data. You see, once we digitized DNA, we made it infinitely mutable. We could do a thousand virtual variations in the time it used to take to grow a one lab grade generation of pathogens. And we could pick the best, most lethal combinations and make them real. That's how you make a killer virus, you see. Mix in genetic code from other diseases and you move the sliders all the way up on lethality and virulence. The goal was a 90% mortality rate. I'm not sure my green poison is going to quite hit that, but honestly, that's just details. As long as most of humanity goes, the Earth stands a fighting chance. Technically, technology is what's killing the planet. But that's not really the case. It's the greed that drives the technology. But a funny thing happened on the way to $100 genome maps and 3D printed plastic toys. Someone figured out those technologies could be repurposed, modified for the greater good. Me. Now, my virus is going to do what nature's always done. Decide who lives and who dies. And if nature decides I die, then I die. If nothing else, I'll have a lot of company. Natural selection at its finest helped along by a little unnatural genetic manipulation. It's all data, really. Life's just a method of processing it. The same way I processed the smallpox genome on my laptop. And who's to say that wasn't the plan all along? If, by some miracle, you survive green poison, then nature's decided you deserve to live. The rest of us shouldn't and won't. Godspeed. I'll see you in hell.
believe the bullshit that went down in the dark zone at the end there. I know. We had it. Everything I told them was dead on. They made us pull out anyway. And we left our dead behind. Yeah, we're not supposed to do that. Hang on a second. Look, we don't leave people behind. We're here to make sure this city doesn't get left behind. But the people we're working with, this is fine. We are leaving all of us behind if it's convenient. Look, I don't agree with that big decision that's been made, but I am saying it's time to leave them behind. Their model doesn't work anymore. If we're smart, we cut it loose before it drags us down, before it kills us. You're talking treason. I'm talking common sense. Look around. There's nothing left to say. The JTF is trying to save a Manhattan that doesn't exist anymore. It is all about power now. Power and survival. They are done, but I am not. And you won't be either. Not if you work with me. I think we need to modify the terms of our agreement. Why, Colonel? It seems to be working perfectly well so far. You get the support of my people and their gear with field intel you couldn't dream of six weeks ago. I get a base of operations, a place on what's going to be the winning side, and the occasional use of your manpower as needed. Not to mention the occasional surface-to-air missile. Or have you forgotten about that chopper in Brooklyn? Look, my people did the dirty work on that op, Bliss, and eliminating Division Senior Command was as much a benefit to you as to me. The last thing either of us wanted was a senior division agent directing a second wave of... Hang on, I'm getting feedback on the link. We've been compromised? Looks like. Cut in the link now. No, don't you. I don't get it. You think there's maybe enough virus going around right now? It's all about the leverage. If I've got my hands on the dollar flu starter kit, this green poison that someone cooked up, then certain people are going to be a lot more reluctant to take a run at me. A gun's a lot better for self-defense than a weaponized virus. Stop thinking small. Start thinking possibilities. There's no medical infrastructure anymore. It's the Wild West out there, but less civilized. Being able to turn certain death loose at any time I want puts me in a powerful position. And controlling the core ingredients for a vaccine, that's useful too. So you might kill even more people. Who's going to notice? It's not the killing. It's the threat of being able to kill. And giving them the hope they might be saved. The way things are breaking down out there, all these different groups carving their own territories out of what used to be civilization. It only makes sense to have an ace in the hole. 